the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor has provided an update to the public about the Rodney Bay Road Improvement Project and has also addressed recent false information being circulated. The Ministry has explained that all procedures have been followed on the project, which is under its purview. The much-anticipated project is meant to alleviate congestion on the roads while also providing safe sidewalks and bus stops for pedestrians and is part of the government's National Road Rehabilitation Project. Project Manager at the Ministry of Infrastructure, Mr. Tybertius Roberts, explained the rationale for the Rodney Bay Road Redevelopment. The Ministry of Infrastructure realized that we were having quite a bit of congestion on our roads, especially the North Coast roads going into Rosalie. So initially, a four-lane highway began from VG roundabout coming up. As you realize, we've done pieces to try to make it better. We did recently the piece from the Halcyon Club going up to the Shock roundabout. And now we see this area as an area where it has become worse. If one realizes that many, many, many motorists would be congested in the area here where vehicles are attempting to go into the um, shopping mall area and by virtue of attempting to turn in, it will hold quite a bit of traffic back. We, not, we wanted to eliminate that and make the flow of traffic a lot easier. For the Ministry of Infrastructure, it was necessary that the project awarded to fresh start construction meet international standards and the plans reflect the government's overall thrust to build resilience. With standards, we, there are certain size roundabouts that you need, certain strength of concrete you need, certain lifelong of roadway you need. We looked at all of these and we have designed this, one, to meet the standards in terms of the size of the roundabout, two, in terms of giving the asphaltic pavement, which will be the base the vehicles will be running on, a minimum of a 20-year span with our design. And more so, we did quite a bit of a traffic survey where we ensure that the flow of traffic will, will flow freely without any hesitation, without problems, without the backlog which we got accustomed to. In terms of the awarding of the contract for the project, the Ministry of Infrastructure explained how the design build finance approach has worked. When we wanted to begin the construction, we suggested the redesign of the two roundabouts. We had what we call a design build finance program. In that design build finance program, it basically the contractor comes in with the money, he designs, constructs, and all we do, all the Ministry of Infrastructure does is supervise the work, ensuring that it is being done as per design. So because we had only two contractors on board, we offered, to, we offered it to one of the two contractors. Initially, we offered it to one who was part of the bid team. And because of his commitment, he was not able to do it. So it was offered to the other to come up with the monies and then do the design and build for it. The project manager explained that the due process was followed every step of the way and there was nothing illegal about the project. It isn't illegal simply because, like I said, initially it came through the Ministry of Infrastructure, the Chief Engineer and the then Minister of Infrastructure. So it could not have been illegal. However, currently with the construction of it the way it is, Everything is being reported to the PS, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Infrastructure, who is the head of the unit. So it continues, it has been, reports are given to him, it has been reported to him continuously, and it continues to be that way. So there's, I don't understand how it could be illegal when everything is done through the Ministry of Infrastructure. The role of the Ministry of Infrastructure has been supportive in the sense of ensuring that the work is done accordingly. The Permanent Secretary has stayed on top of issues along with me with concerns of people whether it be acquisition of land or um, giving them barriers for the property most of the people have been working with us very nicely but the Ministry of Infrastructure on the whole has been in it in fact um, after a few concept concept meetings where 
we provided the drawings for the public at large long before we even did any work. On two occasions, I believe, we met with the then Minister of Infrastructure. On one occasion, we had our architect with us who did a pinpoint um, demonstration. At that meeting, the, actually the Permanent Secretary was attending, the then Minister of Infrastructure made a suggestion that we move the roundabout, which was by MGI, to that of the Aquatic Center to ensure with growth because of development which he knew was coming. We concurred and because of that, that is why the roundabout is now uh, up by the Aquatic Center and not by MGI, which was originally designed. So the then Minister of Infrastructure was involved in it. He saw it, he knew it, he made suggestions, he helped change part of the process. The project manager further explained why two roundabouts in the Rodeby area would help all motorists. Roundabout is necessary because one, moving the design from a single to a double roundabout, you would have to have to so vehicles can comfortably come around one, enter the shopping area, whilst not impeding the traffic going whether it be north or south. If you've got one that's not at that central location, you've got to have another one where they can turn around. So a second round of what was necessary. And hence the reason why we're doing a second one near MGI. But of course that got moved based on suggestions by the then Minister of Infrastructure to go higher up. So the second round of what became necessary for the purpose of the continued flow and ease of traffic in the area. You go around one, you come back, you go to your particular place of business or also, but you need to turn around, you go to the other one, you turn around and you come back. Traffic flows, no congestion. The Ministry of Infrastructure is especially pleased with the amount of work which has been done so far and the economic impact of the project. It's actually adhered to ensuring that many solutions get work as much as possible. So what we've done is we seem to have subcontract, we actually have 12 subcontractors we've hired and through the subcontractors, there's a total of 104 employees they've hired. We attempt to give everybody something. The contractor himself has a total of 57 employees at very, in various fields he's, he's using here. In addition, we have food caterers, which is part of this. We prepare and provide food for the workers, especially when they're working late at night. We have um, security. We have um, people who provide lighting, and all of these are outside people. We do our very best to hire people in every part of the field to ensure that everyone gets a take on it. And it's not just the contractor and his employees. So overall, we have, like I said, 157 employees on this job, with 12 subcontractors and 104 of his employees. Once the project is complete, it will benefit the entire country as Rodney Bay is among the busiest routes in St. Lucia. Mr. Roberts said that the project is already getting major support. We've been getting praises from people as to what's happening. The benefits we have, we have four lanes that's going to be coming in. Soon enough, we're going to have traffic going around the roundabout for us to deal with the roadway. But imagine that you do not have that congestion which we used to have, and you have traffic flowing freely without any problems. Whilst traffic can go to certain places which they wish, you have traffic that can come around the roundabout and keep going comfortably. That's an added benefit. This is in the north. This is a big development for the north. And we intend to develop the island. In whatever little way we can, we intend to do our best. So just visualize when this is completed soon enough how nice this is going to look with four lanes of traffic we have lighting coming in the middle with two arms illuminating both sides of the street and a continuous lovely flow of traffic we intend to later on do some planting along the roadway to give it that sort of beauty you're driving along the highway and you're driving through a number of trees lovely shade and so on the intent is to make and help develop this place in whatever way we can. That is an added benefit. Studies show that over 24,000 vehicles traverse the Roddy Bay Castries Highway daily. As a result, 
The project seeks to improve the flow of traffic as the main Rodney Bay Junction has been identified as a cause for traffic backup. 